Um, you're going to get the Cliff Notes version of how I became a mature artist. So my earliest artistic memory is a uh, watercolor painting on the front porch of our house in Carlisle in a rainstorm. And my brother and I would run out through the rain to get fresh paint water from the downspout. And that's when I discovered that art and fun go together. So by first grade, with the inspiration of a fantastic art teacher, crayons and creativity had me in their grip and I decided I wanted to be an artist. And as you can see, I was quite a prodigy. Yep. So I stubbornly stuck to this artist thing through, through uh, growing up and my parents supported my decision to go to art school where I applied to and was accepted in the fine arts department at Kutztown State College with these groundbreaking portfolio pieces, which I probably did uh, the day before they were due. I was quite fortunate in my freshman year to have a professor who recognized that I was growing in my drawing abilities and encouraged me to enter this piece and be accepted in a national drawing competition. This is called Union of Opposites, and it's done with dots. This validation inspired a confidence to tackle any project, whether I knew how to do it or not, that continues to this day. While I was in school, my main interests were life drawing and photography, and my lifetime goal was to make beautiful paintings. Not money, paintings. And at that time, unless you were in advertising arts, you were told you really couldn't make a living as an artist. So after graduation, I got jobs as a night security guard where I consistently fell asleep, a sales girl, and a waitress before heading to take a job in the engineering department at University of Michigan doing electron microscopy. My willingness to learn and confidence that I could had me look at the electron microscope as a big camera. I had a dark room at my disposal, so I was quite happy. Well, five years and a few other jobs at U of M doing prosthetics and working in a biophysics lab had me ready to ditch winter and go travel, live in other places, meet new people, and do my artwork on the side. And although this gypsy life was full of freedom, it really wasn't ultimately satisfying. And I finally grew courageous enough to ask myself, did I really have what it takes to be an artist? So I rented a studio space at the new, newly created York Arts and set out to make my living as an artist. And all of that was going really well until I met someone, got married, had a child, moved to California. And when that didn't work out, I discovered that I wanted to live where I could afford to make my living as an artist and have time with my daughter. So I clicked my heels, said there's no place like home, and moved back to York, where I had family and friends. And I discovered that this beautiful gift of a child was just the very thing I needed to focus my scattered energies into a productive life of making art. I drew and painted scores of portraits. I started painting portraits in 1976. About 20 some years later, I discovered landscape painting and that was fabulous. Art was fun again. Large brushes, big canvases, no pesky likeness to get. It was good. I had the good fortune to be challenged in diverse projects that stretched my creativity and versatility. You see the mausoleum at Prospect Hill Cemetery, and this is a portion of a Winnie the Pooh mural that was done in a spring house. My love of puzzles came in handy with this shell grotto, which is a sanctuary for a Charles Rudy bathing beauty. Along the way, I was honored with White House and State Department invitations for my participation in the Art in the Embassies program, which placed my paintings in the homes of the two different ambassadors to the Republic of Togo in Africa. 
my acceptance in the Art of the State jury competition led to a purchase award and my piece, Day of Remembrance, being in the permanent collection. I think these are out of order, but that's okay. So in my recent personal work, I was challenged to myself to combine abstract with more recognizable landscape style. I feel it's important to keep fresh, keep learning, and create problems to solve within my paintings. This piece is called Peace and Love and has Sanskrit words of peace and love underneath that cloud. One of the things that makes me happiest is making other people happy by bringing beauty and through my work into their lives. I love being part of a surprise, especially portraits that are presented on Christmas Day or for birthdays that the recipient knows nothing about. I'm overjoyed with the development and art scene in York, and that has led to opening OMG Studios on King Street in Royal Square with my daughter and a friend. It's our way of adding to the growth of this special little city. And so I have discovered along the way that although I can have my head in the cloud of ideas and dreams, I must have my feet firmly planted on a foundation of family, friends, and community to make my living as an artist. Thank you. Thank you.